Israel God's firstborn son. So, so before we, we get into the context, because we're in Genesis 10, and uh, in Genesis 10, we see what people call the table of nations. The world's been destroyed by a flood, and uh, Noah, Noah, his three sons, and uh, their, the four wives, they come off the ark, and they're all the people that's left in the world. So everyone that's in the world today, we know where they all came from, Adam, but but in a sense, they also all came from Noah because all, all flesh had been killed. And, um, and so we've taught the last two Bible studies um, on shadows and pictures. And the first one we talked, on, talked about was Abraham's two sons. Abraham had two sons, right? Ishmael and Isaac. And we, we've discussed that by God's laws that the firstborn is the one that has a right to the double portion of the inheritance to be the ruler over the, the family, right? And, and, and that, it didn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter whether one son's preferred above the other son. It doesn't matter whether one wife is preferred above another wife, right? The firstborn is the firstborn. And really the only way for the firstborn to lose that is by his own actions. In other words, he's proven that he's not responsible enough to be the firstborn. And then it will be passed down to the, the faithful son, right? right. Um, and then that, that we see that also in the second example that we talked about the last time, which was Jacob and Esau. And these men had one mother, right? Twins. And the only reason that Esau had that right was just because he came out of the womb first. Based upon him coming out of the womb first, he had the birthright. He had the right to the inheritance. But he despised his birthright because he didn't care about his inheritance. He sold it for what? One meal. And, and so we're going to look at another son today, another example of this teaching where, where Isaac, uh, even though Abraham had two sons, Ishmael and Isaac, one walked after the flesh and one walked after the spirit. That's the picture. And Isaac was a begotten son. Ishmael wasn't a begotten son. And the reason that Isaac was a begotten son is because once you are born, because Ishmael was born and Isaac was born and they were, they both had the same father. Ishmael is of the seed of Abraham, Right. That's a fact. He is still the son of Abraham. But begotten, when you go to the New Testament, a begotten son is different than a son who's not begotten. You are begotten, you are begat through the word of truth. So what happens is when you read the word, it changes you inside, right? It makes you like him and you become a begotten son. And so you have these two sons, one's begotten, one's not begotten. Well, in a great house, they're what? They're vessels of honor and dishonor. And so that's that's the picture. The picture is you have two sons. They don't, they're not a son just because they're disobedient. And but the difference is got nothing to do with whether they're a son or not. It's got to do with their inheritance. And and Isaac got the inheritance. And Jacob got the inheritance, not Esau, not Ishmael. And so we're going to start to, so over this week and next week's study, we're going to, we're going to look at another son, but this is going to be, it's the same picture. It's going to be just like these other two stories, but it's going to be a little bit different. So, so having said that, let's read the context. He says, now these are the generations of the sons of Noah. So we've talked about this before. Noah was a seed that came out of the loins of his father. And then inside of Noah are three seeds, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. But the seed, these now Ham and Japheth, they have descendants. We know that. But the, the scripture is going to concentrate on this lineage. Now, you think about the word lineage. It makes up, two, there's two words in there, isn't there? line and age, right? So the line or the lineage, right? The genealogy of Shem 
and let's look where Noah came from. Because so, Adam had many sons, but the line went through, or the lineage went through Seth. And all these men had different sons, but this is the line that we're going to follow. Adam, Seth, Enos, Canaan, Mahalalel, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, the father of Noah, and out of that, Lamech, you know, that doesn't really talk about all the sons of Lamech, but we know who one of those sons was, and that son was Noah. And out of Noah came three sons, but the line, the lineage, is going to go through this son, Shem. Shem, Arphax, and Selah, and we see that, right? The sons of Shem, see? He had lots of seeds, didn't he? Elam, Asher, uh, Arphaxed, Lud, Aram, Uz, Hol, Gether, Meshach. All these line, all these seeds, but the line is going to go through Arphaxed. And Arphaxed begat Selah, right? And then Selah is going to have two sons, Peleg and Eber, and it's going to go through Selah. So that's the lineage, that's the line. See right here, Eber and Peleg and Reu, and Sarug, and Nahor, and Terah, and Terah is the father of, we talked about it, right? Abraham, and Abraham had two sons, Isaac and Ishmael, and the, li the line, or the lineage, doesn't go through Ishmael, it goes through Isaac, and then Isaac has two sons, Esau and Jacob, but the line doesn't go through Esau, it goes through Jacob. See, here it is right here, Shem, Arphaxed, Shelot, Eber, Peleg, Reu, Sirig, Nahor, Terah. Here's Abram, the same as Abraham. And then the sons of Abraham are Isaac and Ishmael. So you see right up here, Abraham, here's Ishmael, but the line goes through Isaac. It says Abram, and Abraham begat Isaac. Now the sons of Isaac are who? Now, now notice what it says. He doesn't call him Jacob here because we know that Esau and Israel, Israel had his name what? Changed. So let's look at let's look at that story. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let him go. Oh, sorry, let me go for the day breaker. Now, this is this is the man talking to Jacob. Let me go. And he, Jacob, said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. And so that's when you see that's what you see up here, right? right. Isaac, the sons of Isaac, Esau, and Israel. For as a prince has our power with God and with men and has prevailed. So Israel struggled with God. He had, he said what, he says right here, he says that, uh, for as a prince has our power with God and with men. So he understand, he understood that, that Israel was not a, a man that was going to give up easy, was he? He wasn't a man that, he was not a man that was going to take his inheritance lightly. He was a man. He was a man that understood that what God expected out of him, and he wasn't going to give up, no matter what discouragement came along, what trials came along. He was wrestling with God. God took his joint, his his, his thigh out of joint, and he wouldn't let go. Now, now why is that important? Because his name is changed to Israel. Now, let's look at this, Israel. Now, these are the names of the children of Israel, right? Or Jacob, which came into Egypt. Every man in his household came with Jacob. There's Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Benjamin, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, right? So, think, let's count that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. And, it, and we know he had 12 sons, but Joseph was already where? Jo for Joseph was in Egypt already. Now, before, before we move on, I wanna, and I think maybe we've talked about this before, Patricia, but I'm just gonna take one minute to show you this because a lot of people wanna try to say this is, is 
this is a contradiction in scripture and it's not. So just going to touch on it so you know. He says, and all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were what? Seventy souls that, that went into Egypt, right? And um, what, what happens is they'll take you over this verse here, right? It says at that and that at the second time, Joseph was made known to his brethren and Joseph's kindred was made known unto Pharaoh. Then sent Joseph and called his father Jacob to him and, uh, and all his kindred were threescore and 15 souls. Well, that's 75. And here it says what? 70. So up here it says 70 souls went into Egypt. And here it says, guess what? 75. And it's a pretty easy thing to, to answer. 70 souls that went into Egypt came out of the what? Came out of his loins. Out of Israel's loins, right? right. But 75 we know where 70 of them came from so where the other five come from they were his what kindred you don't have to come out of somebody's loins to be what kin to them right. and so just just so you know that if anybody ever wants to argue with you there's that's the difference 70 of them actually came from the loins of israel whereas the other five guess what they were just kin to israel now, so he look now. Look what he does. He these are the children of Jacob or Israel, and he gives you the he gives you the twelve sons, right? Including Joseph. These are the twelve sons. And now here, look what he's going to do. And these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Jacob and his sons, Reuben, Jacob's firstborn. Now, now look what he's gonna say, do. These are the names of the children of Israel, but he's not gonna just start with his 12, with his sons, right? He's literally gonna call his grandchildren, right? His sons, sons. They're gonna, he's gonna call them Israel's sons and the sons of Reuben, right? and the sons of Simeon, and he gives all to you, and the sons of Levi, and the sons of Judah, and the sons of Issachar, and the sons of Zebulun, right? Now, he gives you these, these men right here, Reuben and his sons, Simeon and his sons, Levi and his sons, Judah and his sons, and Issachar and his sons. And then he's going to tell you how many it was right here. Now he's breaking them down by he had, remember, he had Rachel, he had Leah, and he had the two servants. So he basically had four wives, right? And he's giving you all the sons' names and all of his grandsons' names, but he calls them all the children of Israel. So here we got 33. And then he goes on, he says, the sons of Gad and the sons of Asher, right? He lists them all. And he says, what? Total 16. And then he says the sons of Rachel, like right? Joseph and Benjamin. And he gives you all the all the, the the ones that were born to him, right? And then he goes on and says a total of 14. And then he says the sons of Dan and the sons of Naphtali, a total of what? Seven. And then he gives you Joseph's two sons, right? And then he tells you the total is going to be what? 70 and that's what we find out when you add them up you got 33 plus 16 is um 43 49 and then you add 14 59 63 and what seven a total of 70. but the one thing i want you to understand is he calls all of the, his sons and his grandsons, right? Matter of fact, down here, he mentions that one of his sons had already buried him some grandsons. Um, if I can find it, let's see. Uh, oh, and the sons of what? See, because look, the sons of Judah, one of them was who? Perez. 
and the sons of Perez were what? Two. So these two were his great grandsons. Yet they're called the children of who? Of Israel. So anybody that comes out of the loins of Jacob or Israel is called a son or a child of who? Of Israel. So we go and we know that all of them come into Egypt. Eventually, Joseph died. Well, we know Jacob died first. They took him back and they buried him. And then Joseph dies, and not just Joseph, and all his what? Brethren, and all that what? Generation. So all this, all these people die. And the children of Israel were what? And increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty. And the land was what? Filled with them. Now, that's important because he is calling all the people that came out of the loins of Israel, the children of Israel. Sons, grandsons, great-grandsons, great-great-grandsons. Great. So right now in the world, there are children of Israel, right, that came from the loins of Jacob or Israel. Now, so after Joseph dies, after all the, his brethren and all that generation died, and they're, they're being fruitful and they're increasing, and increasing abundantly and multiplying the children of Israel, there arose a new king over Egypt, which didn't know who Joseph was. And we know the story, right? We know that this king put him into bondage. We know this king, they were multiplying so fast that this king made a law that all the, all the sons were to be thrown into the Nile River and killed. And we know that Moses was one of those and that the Lord preserved Moses and Moses eventually um, left Egypt. And then the what? The Lord said to Moses, when thou goest to return into Egypt, See that thou do all those wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thine hand. But I will harden his heart that he shall not let the people go. Well, who's the people? We know who they are, right? <laughs> they're the children of Israel. He's not, he's not, they're not going to, he, Pharaoh, I want you to do all these miracles in front of him, but he's still not going to let them go. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord. Look what he says. Is he talking about the one person Jacob here? Oh, He's talking about all of the, the seed that came from the loins of Jacob or Israel. He's talking about a multitude, right? Because remember, they were fruitful and increased abundantly and they multiplied, right? So when he says Israel here, he's talking about all that came out of the loins. He says, Israel is my son. And now look what he says. Israel is my what, son? Firstborn. My firstborn son. Now we remember, Abraham had two sons. Ishmael was his firstborn son. We know that Isaac had two sons. Esau was his firstborn son. And we know that the firstborn son has a right to the inheritance if he's obedient. And we're going to see the same example we saw in the other two stories. And I say unto thee, let my son, talking about all these people, let my son Israel, my firstborn son, go that he, now look, he's talking, he, he's talking like this is one man, isn't he? He's calling all of Israel a firstborn son, like he's a one person. But really, when he's saying that, he's talking about the land was filled with them. They were so many of them. And when he says, let my son go, he's talking about all of them. 
And he says, if thou, Pharaoh, refuse to let him go, in other words, you can, I'm going to give you a choice, Pharaoh. You can let my firstborn son go. And if you don't let him go, you know what I'm going to do with your firstborn? If you don't let my firstborn son go, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. And so God loves his firstborn son. I think that anybody that you talk to that has children, their firstborn child is important to them. Right. Is their first child. Now, we remember, let's go back and read it. We talked about this with the example of uh, Abraham's two sons, Ishmael and Isaac. And we talked about this with Isaac's two sons, Esau and Jacob. The man have two wives, one beloved and another hated, and they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated. And if the firstborn son be hers that was hated, then it shall be when he make of his sons. Now remember, this is not about being a son. Okay. Both Ishmael and Isaac were sons. Esau and Jacob were both sons. This has to do with right here, inheritance. His sons, he make of his sons to inherit that which he hath, that he may not make the son of the beloved the firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. You can't change it. Whoever's the firstborn is the firstborn. They have a right to inherit. But he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he hath, for he is the beginning of his strength. The right of the firstborn is his based upon the fact that he was born first. Right? It's a birthright. But just as we've seen in multiple cases, multiple cases in the Old Testament, if you are the firstborn, you can give up not who you are as a son, but you can give up your what? Your inheritance. And that's what we're going to talk about over the next couple of weeks. Is we're going to talk about the firstborn of God. He has a firstborn child. And it is Think about the situation with Esau and Jacob. They had the same mother, right? Isaac loved his wife, Rebecca. And um, when they were born, which, which son did Isaac love the most? He loved Esau, right? That was the one he loved. And he was the firstborn, and it was he was set in his heart, right, to give Esau the what? The firstborn inheritance. He loved him. But in the end, in the end, guess what? Even though that's what he wanted to, God ended up giving it to Jacob. And we know, we know that. We know that Rebecca had been warned right before, when they were wrestling in his in his womb in, in her womb. God told her that guess what? The elder shall serve the what? The younger. the younger. So God knew before they were ever born that Esau would despise his birthright. He would not care about his inheritance. If you don't care about the reward of the inheritance, you're not going to get the inheritance. You got to care about it. You got to be willing. You got to be willing to do what for it? I'll show you what you have to be willing to do. You have to be willing to fight for it, don't you? Like Jacob. I'm not going to let you go unless you give me a what? A blessing. Are you willing to fight for your right for the inheritance? So, so we're going to see that the firstborn son of God is Israel. And God loves his firstborn son. But in the end, loving your son, if they're not obedient, doesn't mean they're going to get the inheritance. They can lose, you can lose your inheritance, even as a firstborn child. So it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this, that we have let who go? 
Israel go? In other words, all these people, God called his firstborn son, he called it Israel. And he had let them go uh, and out by the out by the Red Sea. Now, so when Christ came, Christ came to save his firstborn. He wanted to give his firstborn the inheritance. John the Baptist came preaching, repent. For what? The kingdom, and we all know the kingdom is the inheritance because if you do certain things, you shall not inherit the what? The kingdom. It's an inheritance. This has got nothing to do with whether you're a son because in a great house are vessels of honor. This has to do with inheritance. And when God came, when Christ came in the flesh, it says he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. He came unto his own. Who is his own? Israel. And his own did what? Received him not. Received him not. So what was Christ trying to do? Christ was trying to give them their inheritance. Repent. The kingdom is hand. He wanted to give the inheritance to his firstborn son. But guess what? They, the firstborn son, despised his birthright. He didn't receive him. It says here, and this is his disciples, right? Jesus was walking with him. He was, Jesus was getting ready to go up to Jerusalem. And they thought something. He says, as they heard these things, Jesus added and spake a parable. Now, why did he speak this parable? That word because means this is the reason, this is the cause behind him speaking the parable. Because he was getting close or nigh to Jerusalem and because they thought something. Because who are these disciples? Who are these apostles? They're part of, they're part of Israel, right? They're, they're Israel. They're the firstborn. And they thought that the kingdom, the inheritance of God should immediately what? Appear. They thought, oh yeah, he's getting ready to, he's getting ready to establish the king of, kingdom of Israel back on earth. So he's going to have to speak a parable to them. And he said, therefore, a certain nobleman talking about himself, went into a far country, heaven, to receive for himself a what? They thought he was going to set up the kingdom, and he wasn't going to set up the kingdom, so guess what he did? He had to give them this parable to say he was going to go to heaven to get the kingdom, to get the inheritance, and then he would what? He'd return with the inheritance. And he called his 10 servants and delivered them 10 pounds and said, you know what? Stay busy till I come back. And that's what you're going to see here in Acts. He says, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him saying, Lord, will thou? See, they see, they seem after the resurrection, right? He already told them here. So they gave him a parable, said, I'm going to get the kingdom, and then I'm going to return. But he's going to let them know something a little bit more about after he leaves to go get the kingdom. He says, when they therefore will come together, and they ask of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this, what, time, right now, restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons, the seasons which the Father, in other words, it's going to be a little while. I'm getting ready to leave. I'm going to go get my kingdom and I'm going to come back and I want y'all to stay busy. And you know what? You're not going to know. It's going to be a little while before I come back. So you need to get, y'all need to get busy, right? Right. So, so we see when he came, he came, he came to give his inheritance to his firstborn child. Right. The problem was his firstborn child, just like Esau had done what? Despised his birthright. We see that here 
when they crucified him. Look what he says. He says, when Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover and about the sixth hour. And he's going to say something to the Jews, right? Which are from, guess who? Israel. This is part of his firstborn son here, right? He's going to say something to his firstborn son. Behold your king. Now we already know up here. They didn't receive him. Now look what they're going to do. They're going to sell their birthright. He says, behold, your king. But they cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto him, shall I crucify your king? And the chief priest answered, we have no king but who? Caesar. This is, this is the same as Esau as saying, what profit does this birthright have to me? Because the birthright, the inheritance is the kingdom. And you can't have the kingdom without who? And they're getting ready to crucify their king. They're selling their birthright. Now, this was a common thing among Israel. That God called Israel their, their stiff-necked people. Now, does that mean all of them? No. There's always going to be Joseph. There's always going to be Daniel, right? There's always going to be there's always going to be a, a, a select few. And he says here, what he says in Samuel, when Jacob was come out into Egypt. And your fathers cried unto the Lord. Then the Lord sent Moses and Aaron, which brought forth your fathers, Israel, out of Egypt and made them dwell in this place. And now look what it says. And when they forget the Lord their God, he sold them into the hand of Caesarea, captain of the host of Hazor, and into the hand of the Philistines, and into the hand of the king of Moab, and they fought against them. Now, now that's what God does with his child, right? When you forget about the Lord God, when you forget about your Father in heaven, He's going to put a put, put He's going to put a trial on, on you to get you to do something. And and this is what His goal. And they cried unto the Lord and said, what? That's all Jesus is doing is saying, repent. The kingdom is at hand. God is putting, and we can, we can apply this to all believers, but we're going to apply it to Israel today. God would, when Israel would forget about the Lord, he would put them in somebody's hand. He sold them into the hand of, of the 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 captain of the host of Hazor, right? And into the Philistines, so that that bondage, that trial they were going to, they would they would repent and cry unto who? The Lord. That we've sinned because we have forsaken the Lord and have served Balaam and Ashtaroth. And they would say, but now Lord, deliver us out of the hand of the enemies and we will serve thee. In the world right now is the seed of Abraham. And you know what God's trying to do by putting them through the things they're going through? He's trying to get them to cry out to him. That we have sinned and we have forsaken. He wants his firstborn son to do what? He wants his firstborn son to repent before it's too late or he will lose his inheritance. Esau. You know when Esau cried? It, it wasn't before... It was at the end when it was too late. We'll talk about that here in a minute. He says, um, he says, deliver us and we will serve thee. And the Lord sent Jerubbabel and Abaddon and Jephthah and Samuel, and he delivered you. You cried out to him to deliver you. You confess that you were you sinned and that you forsake God. And now you're crying out to him to deliver you. And he's going to deliver you out of the hand of your enemies on every side. 
and ye dwelled saved. And when you saw that Nahash, the king of the children of Ammon, came against you, you said unto me, Nay, but a king shall reign over us. Right? So here's Israel again. They want a king to reign over them. Now, now, now look. What what did they what did these these Jews up here do when they had their king right there? They wanted to crucify him because we have no king but who? They, they wanted to choose the king. And their king was going to be Caesar. They weren't going to choose the king that God had for them. And look what, what, is, what they say down here. A, a, they, they wanted a king shall reign over us when the Lord your God was what? Their king. He had put judges over them. He was their king. But they wanted a king to reign over them. Now, therefore, behold, the king whom you have chosen, that's what he says. When you don't choose me, God, right, I'm going to give you the king that you chose and whom you've desired. And behold, the Lord hath set a king over you. And that's what happened to Israel when God spread them all around the world to the four corners of the earth, right? It was because they forgot the Lord their God and they had chosen a king when they had God and God has given them the one that they desired, the one they wanted. And right now, do you know what God is doing before? We've talked about this before. Before God restores Israel, you know what he has, to, you know what he's waiting for them to do? His firstborn son. He's waiting for them to cry out to say, we have sinned. We have forsaken God. Uh, deliver us, oh Lord. That's what he's waiting on. But does that mean that the firstborn right isn't his? The firstborn right, if he will repent before it's too late, it's his. He says, half God, look what Paul says to the Romans. Because he's talking, he's going to be talking, he's going to be talking to Gentiles. He says, hath God cast away Israel, his people, right? His first, has, he, has, has God cast away his firstborn son yet? And what's the answer? God forbid. Not, uh, no, not yet. For Paul says, I am and what? Israelite. I'm, an, I'm, from, I'm from the loins of Israel. I'm from the loins of Abraham. I'm from, I'm Benjamin. I'm from the tribe of Benjamin. I came out of the loins of Benjamin. I'm a firstborn child. And guess what? God hath not what? The question is, have God cast away his people? God forbid, God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. What ye not, what the, what the scripture saith of Elias. How he, alas, make up intercession to God against Israel, against his firstborn, saying, Lord, your firstborn have what? Killed the prophets, they dig down the altars, and, and Elijah's like saying, oh, and I'm left here alone. And and they, Israel, the firstborn, your firstborn son, seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto Elias? Yes, it might seem like it's all of them, but guess what? There. Among those firstborn of Israel, I have what? Seven thousand men. <laughs> Even to this day, in the whole world, the seed of Israel is there's a lot of them out there. They haven't turned to the Lord. Matter of fact, God told them in Deuteronomy 28 that He would take out their take away their remembrance among amongst men, that people wouldn't know who they are. And we know right now in the world, there are people who call themselves Jews that are not Jews. And there are people who are Jews that don't, they don't know they're Jews. The people in the world don't know they're Jews. But God says, I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then, at this present time, also, there is a remnant that he has reserved to himself according to the election of grace. That right now in the world, there is a part of Israel that he has reserved, and they're going to get the inheritance. So all these 
so as a Gentile, you had best be very, very careful because just like just like Isaac, right? Because he had Esau and he had Jacob. And, es and, e and, and Isaac loved Esau and Rebekah loved Jacob, right? Don't forget that Isaac loved Esau. He wanted to give it to his son. But his son, the problem with his son, right? The problem with his, his firstborn son is he waited till it was too late. Now, Paul goes on and he says, I say then, have they, Israel, my firstborn son, have that my, has my firstborn son stumbled that they should fall? And again, the answer is what? God forbid. But through, rather through their fall, salvation is come unto you Gentiles. But I did it for a reason. To provoke my firstborn son to what? Jealousy. Now, if the fall of them, my firstborn son, be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of my firstborn son, the riches of the Gentiles. So let me ask you something. Abraham had how many, how many sons? He had two sons, right? Ishmael and Isaac. Isaac had how many sons? Two sons. God says that his firstborn son <coughs> is Israel. So guess who his secondborn son is? Gentiles. The Gentiles. He says, the diminishing of the firstborn son, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. For I speak unto you, my secondborn son, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. If by any means I may provoke, and that's what he's trying to do, through jealousy, right? Right here, where does it say it? Um, whoops. Right here, I'm trying to provoke the firstborn son to jealousy. If by any means I may provoke, may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh. Now, this is understand who's Paul is speaking here. This is Paul speaking to all other Israelites because he's a part of the firstborn son. And I might save how many of them? Because God says, I've reserved to myself a remnant. There's always going to be a, a remnant of Israel that the firstborn son that's going to, they're the firstborn. They're the one that the, that the firstborn son, God loves his firstborn son. And there's always going to be a remnant of Israel that God is going to save. If you th think about he saved his firstborn from Egypt. His firstborn was baptized through the Red Sea. His firstborn went through the wilderness. Do you know that? His firstborn went to get the inheritance, the inheritance, the land of Canaan, but only a remnant, right? Some of them, the ones that reserved himself, got into the inheritance. They were all his sons, but only Caleb, and Joseph got what? They were two of the, t only two of the 12 spies actually got to what? Enter in. They were all sons. Right. He says, if the casting away of my firstborn son be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them but be life from the dead? So God says that there are going to be some of my firstborn son and they're, they're the firstborn, and you're the secondborn. So they're going to get, they're going to get more of the inheritance because they're the firstborn son. Does it mean that you can't, you're not going to get into the kingdom? It doesn't mean that you're not going to get an inheritance if you're faithful as a secondborn son because we, I can give you examples of the secondborn son getting the inheritance. Think about it. Isaac was not the firstborn son. And because, because Ishmael was of the flesh, he walked after the flesh, he didn't get it. 
It's the same with Jacob and Esau. It's the same. David was not the firstborn. He was, I think, number eight. <laughs> and he got it. Solomon was not the firstborn son. Obedience is what God's wanting. If you're the firstborn son, if you're of Israel right now, and you're listening to this, and you know you're Israel, God's saying it's not too late to repent. If you <laughs> will re repent, the kingdom of God is hand. But you cannot wait until it's too late. And I'm going to show you when it's too late. He says, if the first root be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches, talking about the firstborn son, be broken off, and thou, the Gentile, the secondborn son, being a wild olive tree, were graft in among them, and with them partakers of the root and fatness of the olive tree, you, secondborn son, better not do something. Boast not against what? Branches. The firstborn son. But if thou, secondborn son, boast, thou, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. And here's what the secondborn son will say. Thou will say then, the firstborn son was broken off that I, the secondborn son, might be grafted in. Well, that's not completely true. They were broken off because of what? unbelief they didn't believe god they wanted another king they they despised their birthright right that's why they were broken off and thou standest by faith be not high-minded gentiles second born son for if god spared not the firstborn son the natural branches but what he says to us gentiles take heed lest also rot Spare not thee. You, right now, if you're in, lifted up in pride and you think that, oh, you've got the inheritance, don't think that you're auto. Is the inheritance something that you automatically get? No. The inheritance is not something. The kingdom is not something you automatically get. He so, so, Jacob had to do what to get the inheritance? He had to wrestle with it. It was a struggle. He had to fight. What did what did um, Caleb and Joshua have to do to get take their, their inheritance? They had to pick up their sword and go kill the giants, right? Mm -hmm. He said, behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fail severity, but toward thee goodness. Look at the word. If thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise, second born son, otherwise Gentile, thou also shalt be what? Yeah. Doesn't mean you're not a son. Just means you're not going to get your inheritance. If you do certain things, fornication, idolatry, adultery, uh, lasciviousness, I, the list goes on and on. You know what Paul told the Corinthians, Galatians, and Ephesians? If you do these things, I've warned you before and I'll warn you again, thou shalt not inherit the kingdom. Right. It's an inheritance thing. It's got nothing to do with being a son in a great house, right? They're vessels of honor and dishonor. And they also, talking about the firstborn son, if they abide not still in unbelief, because that's why they were cut off or broken off, if they abide not in unbelief, shall be what? Graft it in. Graft it back in. For God is able to graft them in again. If they will repent and if they'll cry out to the Lord when they're going through these trials, he will restore his firstborn son. And if he restores him, he will get the inheritance. For if thou were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were graft contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which are the natural branches, which are the firstborn son, be graft into their own olive tree? For I would not, brethren, talking to the Gentiles, talking to the secondborn son, that you, that me and you, Carlos, and you, Patricia, we should not be ignorant of this what? This mystery lest you should be wise in your own consent. 
that blindness in part is happened to the natural branches, is happened to the firstborn son until the fullness of the Gentiles we come in. Their eyes are going to be open. <clears throat> so, let's look at this. Because I want to show you the picture, the shadow in the Old Testament of the real thing. Jesus was the Lamb of God. And they were told when they were in bondage, who was told? The natural branches, the firstborn son. Your lamb shall be without blemish a male of the first year you shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats and you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month and the whole assembly of the congregation of israel the firstborn son shall kill it in the evening and they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side post and on the upper door post of the houses when they shall eat it right he says, because I'm going to pass through the land of Egypt this night, and I'm going to smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Why? Because what? remember what he told Moses. You tell Pharaoh to let my firstborn go, or else I will take his firstborn from him. And he wouldn't let him go. He says, I'm going to smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and again, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. He passed over them that night, right? Didn't destroy any of his firstborn son. They're all his children. And then you know what he's going to do? He's going to take them through the Red Sea. Watch this. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still. He delivers his firstborn child out of bondage. And now he's going to say, he's going to take them out by the Red Sea, and he's going to say, See the salvation of the Lord, which you shall show to you this day. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and he shall, and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me, speaking to my firstborn son, the natural branches, that they go forward. Don't go back to Egypt. Go through the Red Sea. Move forward, because I'm trying to take you to your inheritance. I'm not taking you out in the wilderness to live in the wilderness forever. You're going... This life is not, this life outside of the world that we live right now, that you're living separated from the rest of the world, is not the goal. The goal is the inheritance. The goal is the land of Canaan. He says, but lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel, my firstborn, shall go on dry land through the midst of the sea. So he saves them by the blood of the lamb. He takes them through the sea. And the Lord went before them, because the Lord's always going to be before his children, by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way, and by the night in a pillar of fire to give them light. To go by day and night, he took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by the night. So Mo Moses brought Israel, the natural branches, right, the firstborn son, they took them from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness. So now they're in the wilderness. Is the wilderness the inheritance? No. no. Are they in bondage in Egypt anymore? No. This is where you are. We talked about justify, justification. Justification was when he brought them out of Egypt. Sanctification is what's going to take place in the wilderness. He's going to try to sanctify them. And if they get into the land of Canaan, they are, that's glorification, right? That's when they will be glorified. That's when they get their inheritance. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of the place was called Marah. 
And the people, the firstborn son, who'd been delivered out of Egypt and was on his way to get it in his inheritance, guess what they were doing? They were murmuring against Moses. This is the picture. This is the shadow of the real thing. Now let's look at it. Because he, Paul's going to explain that to them. He says, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant. So he's talking to Israel, right? Israel here. And he's going to tell you that he's talking to Israel. How that all our fathers, right? They were under the cloud. Isn't that what he says up here? They were what? Pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire, right? They were all under the cloud. How many of them were went through the Red Sea? How many of the first one went through the Red Sea? All of them, right? All of them were under the cloud and all of them went through the sea. And all of them were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All of them. They were all saved out of Egypt. They were all baptized in the Red Sea. And they did. And not only that, they did all, not some of them, not most of them, all of them did eat the same spiritual meat. And they all drank the same spiritual drink. For they, talking about the firstborn son who was delivered out of Egypt, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was who? Christ. Christ. They were all saved. Now listen to what he's going to tell Israel, the firstborn son. But with many of them, God was what? Not well pleased. He was not happy with them, was he? Even though he'd saved them, he's baptized them in the Red Sea. They're in the wilderness. They're heading for their inheritance. They're the firstborn son. He wants to give them their inheritance. But he wasn't pleased with them. And how did he show that he wasn't pleased with them? For they were overthrown in the what? The wilderness. They didn't get the inheritance. Now, all these things right here, right here, all these things were what? Examples to the intent. Now, he is specifically talking to Israel here. But he's talking to believers, all believers, firstborn and secondborn, because we're all his children. These were our examples to the intent that we, Carlos, Patricia, Dwayne, me, that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters as were what? Some of them that were saved by the blood, baptized in the Red Sea. They're in the wilderness. God's trying to sanctify them so they get their inheritance. But he wasn't happy with a lot of them because they were lusting after evil things. And that's our example. He says, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us, us, commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Look what they were doing. They were doing what? They were committing fornication. They were idolaters. They never they never made it to their inheritance. You know what God says about the inheritance? He says, fornicators and idolaters shall not what? Inherit the kingdom. Inherit the kingdom. That's why he tells us, let us, let us come not, neither let us commit fornication. Some of them committed and fell, they fell <coughs> in one day, three and 20,000 of his firstborn children. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted. And look at the word. Well, God would never destroy his children. You don't know God very well. <laughs> God will destroy you even after he saves you through justification when he's trying to sanctify you and you will not allow him to sanctify you guess what he will do destroy you. he's patient but if you don't if you despise your birthright you don't want your inheritance guess what 
he will destroy you in the wilderness. He says, neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were, what's the word? They were destroyed. He said, well, that, that doesn't apply to me. Well, now all these things happen unto them for what? Examples to you for you. These things were whose examples? Our examples. And they are written for who? Our admonition. Upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, whether you're a firstborn son or your secondborn son, let him that think if he stand do what? Don't, if, you, if you're a Gentile, don't, don't boast against the natural branches. Like, like you deserve it. You, you, it was given to you because they failed. No, they failed because of unbelief. And if, if, if they will turn from that unbelief, guess what? God is able to graft them back in. They're the firstborn son. If Esau had repented before it wasn't too late, guess what? And we'll talk, we'll talk about that next week. So I don't want to get too much into that. He's going to tell you something in Jude. He says, I'm going to put you in remembrance of something. Though you, you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved, he saved the firstborn child out of what? Out of Egypt. But afterward, in the wilderness, before they got glorified, before they got their inheritance, while God had them in the wilderness, he was trying to sanctify them, right? They did all these things, right? What does it say right here? They were destroyed. They were destroyed. He saved them, and then afterward he what? Destroyed them. And believed not. There's always, amongst Israel, there's always going to be a remnant. There's always going to be a Joshua. There's always going to be a Caleb. God will always reserve for himself a remnant. He wants to save the, all the firstborn, but he gives you example after example. He gives you Ishmael, and he gives you Isaac. One was a begotten son. One walked after the spirit. One was after the flesh. He gives you Jacob and Esau. Jacob was the firstborn. He had arrived then in, to the inheritance, but he despised his birthright. He didn't think it was important. He didn't care about it. And... We will talk more about Esau next week.